Hello, in this code I'm going to show how to run the R code and explain a little bit about processing the SQL output that comes from the tree tracking uh, SQL project. Basically we start out in R Studio, and those of you who are familiar with it will recognize this. To load the code you just say file, open file, and navigate to the .r file, which will then load it here in the editor. Down below I have the console, and I'm not showing the, the other part of the RStudio browser here, but, but there are a couple other windows off to the right. Um, the first thing you need to do is load the packages, load and or uh, install the packages that you need. So the way I typically do this is I'll just make a list of packages like this. You separate them by commas. We then run some code that will, um, if you do not have the package installed already, install it. Otherwise, it will enable the package. So it's ready to use the functions that are contained in this package. It's kind of like a plugin, which will give you extra functionality. We then use the file choose function to, to get R to prompt us for a file name. So when I click this, it will a box will pop up asking me where the file is located. And sometimes it pops up behind the R window, so you have to be patient and you have to kind of look for it. But you know that it's running because you'll see that a, the, the script is running, which I'll show you in a moment. And then we'll navigate to the file. So um, here, w when I do that, I, I've assigned a variable called fn. So what I like to do is just type fn down here. And I actually, this is the path in the, uh, with the correct direction of slashes in the path. And I like to take that and I like to paste it into a comment. And you can tell that these are the comments because they're, uh, they're preceded by a pound. Um, so that I know where I got the file and that I can quickly rerun it if I, if I need to. So here, this read CSV function is basically reading the file name and it's telling as I, you know, as I import a text string, I do not want it to turn into what's called a factor, which is not other R data type that I'm not going to be using in this particular project. I don't think you really need this. And if the strings were factors, I don't know if it would be a big problem, but point is this is typically what I do unless I know that I need factors. So I've created the object 01. If we say we type head 01 and say well show me the heading or the top several rows of that and you get down here a list of uh, a listing of what the uh, file looks like. So you can kind of look at it to make sure that uh, it's what you expect. I'm like oh did I expect NAs? I said well yeah I did. There are some blanks. So when R reads in a file with blanks in it, it just gives it an NA, and that's not a problem. It has to put something there. So okay, I'm, I'm ha happy with that. I didn't see anything that worries me. This, I think I need, I'm not sure, but I, I put this in to deal with these super long numbers. Otherwise, it sometimes converts those to scientific notation, but, but I actually want to see the whole number. This might just be a display thing, uh, but I, I typically do this when I'm working with these CNs. Okay, so this is a uh, concatenation script. So, so here I'm, I'm, I'm saying, with the O1 object, do this, which is this paste function. So this, what, I, what I'm doing here is I'm saying, if there's an NA in the T3CN column, the, 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 the plot ID, or the tree ID associated with the time three, um, use a, you know, a, not a blank, but nothing. Basically, these two uh, quotes means nothing. Otherwise, concatenate CN with the same thing for C4, C5, and T6. So what this is doing is it's saying, if there's an NA in that, so basically for this top record that we're looking at, it would, it would append, it would, it would concatenate this string, this string, this string, and then it would get here and say, well, it's an NA, so I'm just going to put nothing there. This one, this, in this row, row two here, we just concatenate these two. With this, we just concatenate th this one. And if we scroll down, we can see somewhere NA is, is the leading, um, is the T3CN value. And it would just con concatenate any ones that have a valid number there. So this is kind of the meat of, of what I'm doing here. I've made a new column. 
you see the O1 object is like, it's a data frame, it's like a spreadsheet, right? And then putting a dollar sign here and then a new column name, which didn't exist in the original one, creates that, that new column in, in the data frame. So here, uh, this duplicated function, this is saying, I want to um, return everything in the O1 data set that is not duplicated um, in this particular uh, column. And the reason I need to do, I don't need to do that, but it makes it a lot faster because, because of the nature of the SQL code and the full joins and the nested full joins, it basically duplicated several records. Um, which is a lot of extraneous information that we don't want. We don't want duplicates or, you know, partial records. What we want is the, the, the fullest uh, tree history record out of that SQL output that we can get. So by, by running this bit of code, uh, this duplicated function, and then actually saying not what's duplicated, that's what the exclamation point means, I'm subsetting the O1 to get only the uh, non-duplicated rows. And I'm not sure how it chooses. Let's, let's say there's a duplicate. There, there's two identical values. I'm not sure how it chooses which one to return and which one to reject. It probably chooses the first one it encounters in the file, like going from top to bottom. Um, you can look that up. But for me, in my particular application, it doesn't really matter uh, because if it's duplicated, it's duplicated and it has all the same information. So, so anyway, this creates a new version of O1 which is uh, significantly shorter than the original one. So um, we then do what I have is, is an apply function. And you could do this, you don't have to use an apply function, you could do it with a loop. And I actually was doing it with a loop and I, it was taking forever. And that's common that loops are quite slow. So an apply function will um, work its way through a file or through a list basically L apply, I think it means list apply or apply whatever is inside to the list. So the list that I'm creating here is the se sequence, the results of the sequence along <laughs> um, function. The sequence along function basically um, says, well, for every record in this, uh, in this subset of the data, and you might have gleaned by now or already know that it's this syntax, this subset of file. You put it in brackets. In the first position here before the comma, it's the number of rows or, or the row. And that and this after the comma, it's the column. So I'm saying if you don't put anything in the position for either the rows or the columns, it, it takes all of them. So what I'm saying here is I'm with this syntax, I'm saying subset the O1 file, all rows and column one. So the sequence along that column of numbers is basically just like record record number. So I could have done instead of sequence along, I could have done something different. But this, this is just a convenient way to get a like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine down, down to the last record, a, a column of numbers. There's other ways to do this, but I just did it this way. So anyway, we're doing this function um, and I'm defining a function. So it's for each of the things in this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, et cetera, uh, column, I, I am applying this function. I'm sending the iteration number, basically i, to this, this bit of code, this function. And, it, and it's what's contained in here. So what am I doing? I'm taking, I'm making a subset of, of the O1 temp by, by this nifty function this string detect uh, function, which is in the stringer package, which I've loaded up above. So I can use that function because I've, 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 I've enabled that function. And it is saying for every record, um, or, or for look through this column, the, the concatenated CN column, which I described above, for the, the string contained in, in that row of that column. And um, if it finds a, if it finds that that string is contained in this, uh, in this column, 
or a portion of that string return basically a, a uh, vector of ones and zeros. Everywhere it's a one, I want to subset the file. So if, 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 this deter, if this returns a one, what that means, uh, well, if, if this returns a one, what it means is that there is a that string or a portion of that string found in that position. So by subsetting 01 with this, what I've in effect done is I've, is I've identified all of, the all of the records that are either duplicates or partial duplicates. So for example, there might be three, for the first record, there might be three rows that get returned in 01 temp. Those three rows are um, are pieces are are pieces of the same concatenated CN basically. So anyway, so then I, I've got that, which is great. It's, it's a little tiny subset of the big file. I then um, will sort it by the CN cat as a number and the uh, row number as a number so that I get the, the largest one at the bottom. And that's important because then I am with this code, again, subsetting, you see those brackets, I am subsetting by the last row of this 01 temp object. So what, what is in effect happening here is I am spitting out of the function the largest, i.e. the most complete plot record, uh, concatenated plot CN, and writing it to the Y output file. The Y output is, is, is a list, and a list is just another, it, it's like, it's not a spreadsheet-like thing, it's just basically like a stacked pile of, of outputs, which, which have all the data I want, just not in the format I want. So in summary, this lapply function um, goes for every record in this list of this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, you know, list applies the function for each, each member of that list. And here's where it uses the I. It looks at this plot record uh, in this column. It says, is that plot record contained in the, um, that columns, uh, in that column anywhere? If so, subset the 01 file to make a very small 01 TMP file, which has just the records that are associated with that first record in my list that, that, are, uh, that are either the full or partial copies of each other, basically. Sort that so that I can get at the very bottom of, of, of the sorted 01 TMP file, the last record. And then I, I will write that out, which, you know, when you, when you just put this line of code in here, it writes out just that record and spits it out and it gets added to the output. <laughs> I know that might be like, what the heck is he talking about? It's just something, it's not super complicated. And I recommend um, if you want to understand this, really go on, on online and say, L apply tutorial R and you'll find some very simple examples that will just walk you through how it, how the L apply function works. In fact, that's exactly what I do when I know I want to do something. I look up like I don't know what I want to do. I want to sort I want to sort a data frame. How do I do it? And we can just show you here. Let's see here. I can't seem to get it, but uh, there. So I I just look up sort data frame R <laughs> and it gives you all like more tutorials than you would ever need. And that's what I love about R. There's such a great user community. I'll apply R example. So you, you will find more than you would ever need to teach yourself R. And I never took a class. I just taught myself from, from zero, basically. So you guys can do that too, as, as you, if you really want to know about this, because it's a great function. So anyway, we get, we get this output Y, which is the, um, the list of unique records, except it's not really the list of unique records. Sometimes 
uh, what it actually does is uh, it, it has copies of the same full um, plot CN in it. So it's not fully done yet. We basically need to do one more post process of it. And th these duplicates are, are simple duplicates. In other words, it's just a simple list of the, of the plot CNs. So we, so we take that Y, that list format, and we turn it back into a data frame. And, and you know, you can look this up, but basically um, what, what I did is look up convert list to data frame R. And it tells you exactly what to do. And exactly what to do is what I did here. You just scroll down here, where are the answers? And there's lots of ways to do it. You could do it this way, or you could do this do call thing that I did. So I, I did this, and that worked just fine. So then, once we've got this, we've turned it back into a data frame, we can get rid of the duplicates, which are some residual duplicates from this, this bit. And finally, we've got our fully subsetted, um, ready to run <laughs> to data set, which is called, in this case, YDF2. And you can rename it to something more meaningful if you want. And then finally, what I like to do is use the write CSV function send the file to a file name of my choosing, which I have to specify. I have to put like output.csv in, in, in the directory of where I want it. Anyway, that explains the code. So good luck. <laughs>